Here's a fun way to start this Caravan of Garbage episode on the Amazing Spider-Man 2, Mason. This is from director Mark Webb himself. I want to create a universe that can withstand and anticipate future storylines while also working in and of itself for one movie. How do you think this uh, this movie fares? Please leave a like. How do you think this movie fares in that regard? Please leave a like. Please do. A lot of setup. Let yeah. me tell you, in this movie, I'll tell you what. I mean, look, this is a mess. And I do have good things to say about some of it. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> there's there's two and a half villains. There's, there's more than that. Yeah, there, no, there kind of <laughs> is. You know, there's Electro, there's Harry Osborn, there's a, there's Rhino, there's the setup of the Sinister Six. Uh, you're forgetting the Black Cat, which is sometimes a villain. Oh, that's right. You yeah. are forgetting Alastair Smythe, the Spider Slayer. Yeah. You are forgetting Doctor Cuffter. You're forgetting the uh, the Basement of Origins. <laughs> the Basement of Origins. There's a subway car full of secrets. <laughs> I have questions about that. Maybe we'll get to those later. We're forgetting about Aunt May is sad that she's not a good parent and also she doesn't like being a mature age student at nursing school. She's We're making a goal of it. That's a good thing. It's good for you. Oh, yeah, exactly. We're forgetting Gwen Stacy's going to Oxford. Got Oxford. Um, I forgot that. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot a lot of this. <laughs> yeah. It's got a great start, I have to be honest. The, yeah. Not the plane crash, right? No, I quite like the plane crash. No, just no. Why are they doing that? I'll tell you why they're doing it, James. Mm -hmm. It's for the Sony Vio sponsorship in the middle of the plane crash. I have a note here that says I, I, it, it looks good, and they're doing, the, they're obviously doing the tilt the set thing, or the, or the going up in an actual plane thing, whichever one, or, or CGI, whatever is cheapest, because they're bouncing all about That's the true. set, and it looks really great. But I love this. It a looks scene. like the Australian TV show Tilt the Room. It looks exactly like Tilt the Room. They clearly had the money for this sequence because there's a moment where Richard Parker and like the assassin, I think, on the plane are fighting over his laptop and clearly they've received a, a, an instruction from the director it's like hey can you tilt can you tilt the laptop so everybody can see it says vio yeah. uh, you, it's upside down switch it again i don't think i've ever seen a sony vio outside of a jb hi-fi there's a local reference have you no never yeah i'm, I'm look i'm sure they're fine but like i don't is it are they <laughs> Oh, just FYI, folks, uh, we're being paid by Sony Via for that. That's that right. That was our testimony. <laughs> that was that was her testimonial there, folks. It's fine, I think. <laughs> Probably good. I don't know. But I think the the true opening to this, uh, the web swinging through New York City, mm -hmm. is some of the best web swinging we've ever seen in Spider Man, even to this day. And sure, where's he dropping from at the start? Is he dropping out of that plane but still crashing? <laughs> sure is. Because he's certainly up very high. Yeah. But that you can see like the ripples on the suit. He will do like. Hand over hand, like scrabbling up a web as yeah, he's yeah, moving yeah. along. He'll do walk the dog. He'll do <laughs> baby's cradle or whatever yep. it is. <laughs> that, that triangle one. He'll do about. a third yo-yo trick. Around the world. Around the world, baby. <laughs> I just think it's really good. I Genuinely. Agree. It's probably falling off a helicopter, right? Yeah. Mm. He's also dicking around too much because he's late for his, like, for his graduation. Right. But at the same time, he's just like chatting to the rhino. He's like, hey, what's going on? I'm just at your window. Just web the brake. What are you doing? Sure. This is a truck careening through peak hour New York City. And he's like, we're just having fun here. I'm a fun guy. Just kill him and crash the truck. <laughs> Who's going to know? No one. Snap his neck, tilt the truck over, be like, you must have died in the crash. <laughs> I don't know. You can't stop me. I'm above the law. I'm Spider-Man. I'll end all of you. Do you like the new suit? Is it different? It's completely different. What are you talking about? Right. It's like night and day, literally. Then yes, I do. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's cool. Ah, uh, but of course, in the street, who does he meet? Who does he happen to come across? Ah, oh, just, just absolute nerd. <laughs> just absolute poindexter, Max Dillon. Yeah. What I love about, again, we, we were in this era where they couldn't commit to true comic book silliness, I think. Sure. It's a, it's a fascinating design for Electro. Like, it's such a weird take, I think, but also... It's just a lot of Dr. Yeah. Manhattan at times. Yeah, it is a little Especially bit. Especially like when he's coming in and out of stuff and he's rebuilding exactly. his body. Exactly. Yeah. I think it's odd that... And it, his teeth. Yes. At, at, at this point, they were like... Because in the, in the comic book, Max Dillon becomes Electro because he's an ordinary like electrical lineman. Yep. He is struck by lightning as he falls onto a high-tension power line. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, that's ridiculous. So I think how he should get his powers is he, he should be holding onto an electrical cable as he falls into a tank full of genetically modified electric eels. Makes more sense to me. Right. What I also love about that scene is like leading up to it, knowing that there is a basement full of origins like in this movie. Yes. That was bound to happen. He was going to fall into something. It's a, it's, a, it's such an odd place to work, right? <laughs> Tank full of electric eels in the power department. That's, once again, some big Flintstone <laughs> vibes there. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I also think the idea of Spider-Man fighting an electric man in Times Square yes. is an excellent concept. 
Sure, like yeah. visually, there's yeah, a lot yeah. you can do there. You can show so many product placements. Absolutely. Some of them even like stay lit as others get like fried out. You know what yeah. I mean? You can't fry a Sony Vio. <laughs> tell you, tell you that much. <laughs> the scene where Spider Man rescues a bunch of people, like he captures like that careening car and his web, sure. and then he rescues all the people from being electrocuted on the set of stairs. And you know, a lot of visual effects involved, but obviously it does look great. It does sort of imply that Spider Man can move faster than the speed of light, but whatever. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> is it? Yeah, it's fine. I think it's fine. Now, Magic Blood is famously something that has been used before by Robert Orsi and Alex Kurtzman. May I say? Is it Star Trek Into Darkness? Or it is. is that afterwards? Uh, it's, yeah, I think it's it's around now. It might okay, be slightly sure. before, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because Kurt, of course, in that movie, Who Captain Kurt. Uh, Captain Kurt, yes, sure. He dies mm -hmm. famously by getting so many radiations. Mm -hmm. And then they go, wait a minute. Just pump this dude full of magic blood. Here he is. He's back. Yeah. This time around, Spider-Man's origin is tied in directly to the science behind the spider that bit him mm. because it's got his DNA because his dad made it because his dad's a super scientist. That combination of things turned him into a Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. But Dane DeHaan's like, excuse me, I'm the Green Goblin in this one. I've sure. got the Green Goblin disease, everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad died. It's gobbling me up. <laughs> it's gobbling up all my cells. <laughs> Side note, there is a moment where he goes to the Ravencroft facility to break out Electro and Harry Osborne paper-thin former fashion model just incapacitates two guards. Oh, he does too, doesn't he? wham-wham! And he's, he's got that goblin disease that's killing him. He's got the goblin disease, yeah. He just goes for it. Okay, let's talk about the green goblin. Wait, he's, where were you going with that, that other thought? I don't know, magic blood, something who gives a shit. But he's got... <laughs> just give him the blood, Peter. Just give him the blood, Well, he it's shouldn't, because he turned him into a goblin. What's the worst? What's the... Oh, yeah, that happened. <laughs> it's not bad. No. But here's the thing. I reckon... If you'd just given him the blood he earlier. He would have not put it directly in him. He would have tried to figure something out. No, I reckon he would have put it directly in him, but he also, he'd be a goblin, but he wouldn't be mad about it. Okay. If you'd just given him the blood, he would have been like, I'm the goblin now, but feeling pretty good, so I'm not, not even mad about I'm gonna it. I'm going to go day to day with this. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> I like my new hair. I like my new look. <laughs> he looks like Evil Ed. Yep. Fright Night. I remember. Peter. Peter. Somebody should look up his bio. Not here. Don't show it here. Don't show it. Don't show it whoever's editing this video. <laughs> it's Ben. Thanks for not putting it in, Ben. It's rude. <laughs> it's very rude. Uh, but yeah, he has retroviral hyperplasia. Okay. Is that uh, a real disease? No. Could, Could that... we make it a real disease? We yeah. get a trending? Oh, definitely. Let's get a trending. Okay, cool. <laughs> Hashtag retroviral hyperplasia. Look, I don't hate the look so much because I've seen New Goblin. So I look sure. at this and go, it's not New Goblin, is it? No. At the very least, we get a kind of like a goblin-esque face. Yeah. As opposed to just ski goggles or whatever new goblin had. Ski goggles and a sword. Yeah. And a snowboard. Mm -hmm. And a bomb to the face. Sure. But yeah, I think that transfer... I'm goblin up this powder, <laughs> you would say on the slopes. <laughs> goblin it up. Hence the name, guys. Oh, I've hit my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. But I think his transformation, it's like, it, it's quite grotesque and horrifying, mm. which I think a lot of Spider-Man transformations in the movies and the comics, you know, they can tend to be. Yes. And it all, of course, culminates in a, a fight with Electro um, where he's playing the Spider-Man tune. I like that he's a weird dubstep monster. I think that's cool, maybe. I love that he's a weird dubstep monster, <laughs> but he also has like a, like a whimsical flute theme before he gets mad. <laughs> <laughs> He's just standing there and it's like fiddle dee fiddle dee diddle dee doo. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course we get the uh, the fight with um the goblin at the end where they kind of beat the tar out of each other, which culminates in and we haven't really talked about her. God, this is a whole movie about culminating, isn't it? There's it so much is. culmination. It might be too much now that I think about mm. it. Uh the death of Gwen Stacy, which is not dissimilar from the comic. Mm -hmm. uh, I do want to talk about how a lot of things were left out of this and changed uh, in a minute. But I think that moment like some of the things in this movie is like a genuinely kind of touching, sad moment because I think those two work well together. Uh -huh. The problems with these movies are not those two together. Correct. You know? Mm -hmm. We've only really had, you know, we've had a couple of hours with these characters together and if, yeah. if their chemistry was kind of wooden, we'd be like, yeah. Good. <laughs> we say good, it's good that that woman died. <laughs> she was gobbling up too much screen time. <laughs> Hence the name. Uh, I've written here, it's not all awful. I want to name some things that aren't awful. I think if you cut 
probably 40 minutes out of this. Okay. I think there's actually a very solid movie here. Like, genuinely. Would it still be intelligible? I think Who it would. Who cares? Okay, great. Yeah, I think so. But the core of this is something. And I think this movie is much maligned because it tries to do too much and set up so much. Mm. And I think that kind of shades over all the things that, that are actually good about it. I think making Gwen Stacy an actual person is interesting. Sure is. Because, again, she only became an interesting person after she comes back from the dead in the comics, which, again, I do want to come back to because that ties into something that was cut out. I think the final scene where kid Spider-Man wants to step up to the rhino, Paul Giamatti's in this, uh, wants to step <laughs> up to the rhino, is good and shows, like... I mean, that kid's dumb. That kid shouldn't He'd do die. That. Yeah. That guy's got guns and missiles and that. He's in a big rhino Doesn't suit. Doesn't even need the guns and missiles. Just squish you. Yeah, but that kid was only seeing the behind-the-scenes imagery of that. Have you seen that? It's it's pretty funny. Just, like, standing on a box and he's in, <laughs> and he's in a big box. But I think, you know, Spider-Man inspiring the city and then, you know, and then Spider-Man disappearing, then actually showing up and, like, kind of New mm-hmm, York mm-hmm. rallies behind him. You know, the rhino's like, come down here so, I, you know, I'm going to kill you. And he's like, you want me to come down there so you can kill me? All right, you know, let's do mm-hmm. it. I think that's all, like, really great. I mean, they probably shouldn't have shown that scene in the trailer. Sure. The last scene of the movie. Mm -hmm. There was something like... But that's not uncommon in a Hollywood movie trailer. Less so now, I guess. But there was something like 47 minutes of this that was released in promotional material oh, yeah. like prior yeah. to this movie coming out. Was that was was that all that was released prior to this movie coming out, James? Oh mate, I, I got so I got so much stuff to say. Do you want me to talk about deleted scenes first or the Sony hack? It's dealer's choice. Spin the wheel. Deleted scenes. Alright, here we go. Andrew Garfield revealed that the original script focused more on the relationship between Gwen Stacy and Peter Parker, as well as the evolution of Max Dillon into the psychotic Electro and Harry Osborn's descent into madness. Whoa. During production at the behest of Sony Studios, the story underwent a major overhaul to introduce a number of additional characters from the Spider-Man mythos, mm. including Rhino, Black Cat, Dr. Kafta, Kafta, Kafta. And allusions to Mysterio, Vulture, Doctor Octopus, and Craven the Hunter, and mm-hmm. little little I don't know if you saw uh, uh, Harry Osborn's hologram table of secrets. Yeah, there's a reference to Doctor Morbius. There is. I think there's a and ben- a reference to Australia Project. <laughs> What's that? Do you think they're referring to the TV show The Project? <laughs> the light news and entertainment show that's been on for a hundred years? Maybe it was that. Maybe. Do you think they're referring to the Australian TV show Tilt the Room? Yes. <laughs> the two TV shows we have. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and the hopes of this was, you know, create, create a line of, you know, sequels and spin-off movies. Uh, Shailene Woodley was cast as Mary Jane Watson. Oh, yeah. There is behind-the-scenes imagery of this. This was entirely cut, obviously, because it's 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 two, it's like over two and a half hours. It's a long movie, yes. You can't squeeze that in. There was also more for Felicia Hardy to do as Black Cat. So yeah. she was going to do some actual Black Cat stuff as opposed to secretary stuff, which is, she's not known for in the in the comics, really. Generally not, no. Mm, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't, like, discount it from, like, the history of Spider-Man comics. Sure, sure, basically. sure. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's incredibly accurate. According to director Mark Webb, the transformation from man to goblin... Sure. Mm-hmm. It was more grotesque and involved things like Harry's teeth shattering and then oh. regrowing, but they showed it to a bunch of kids mm-hmm. in, like, a test audience, and they were like, we don't like this. We don't <laughs> like this at all. Why'd you put this in this movie? <laughs> we, we're terrified of this thing you've done. And the idea is also that the Green Goblin is conscious when Gwen Stacy dies. You'll notice that he like gets knocked out and he's not there to gloat and do yeah, his right, thing. Yeah, right, right. And he's de- and he comes down. He starts laughing at Peter. So there was a few different variations on this. Uh-huh. One was he's the one who cuts the web, which yeah, leads right. which leads to her death. One is that he fatally stabs her, and one is where he breaks her neck with his bare hands. Wow. Ah, uh, but it's they, a lot. <laughs> it's a, yeah, so many options. But it's interesting though that her death is different than in the comics. In the comics, Spider-Man catches her with the web before she hits the ground, but her neck snaps. In this, she actually hit, he's too late. Yeah. And the, and she her body hits the ground. Yeah. As also, as, Green Goblin not that green in this movie. Should have used his magic blood. Could have brought her back. That's true. Turn her into a goblin woman. <laughs> That's right. It says she's gobbling up these bloody floorboards. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the name. Oh, and as a result of any of those versions of mm-hmm. what they didn't put in, he nearly beats the Green Goblin to death. And sure. there's actually this one image of it. Here it is. What do you think, Mason? Wow. Yeah, he loves it. Uh, Sexy. This was also in the trailers of promotional material, but Peter Parker was under surveillance as well. Why? Isn't that the question of the day? Yeah, because they're, they're the, the men in the van. Yeah. But is there an additional van? Surely not. Well, I think the idea initially was that they're following Peter Parker because they think something's up with him yeah, and maybe right. the ties to Richard Parker or whatever. Uh-huh. Uh, but I might also have a reason for why that's not 
in the movie, which I'll talk boring. about. It's very boring. There's also a fully released scene, which you might have seen, where Peter Parker is at a cemetery, as he often is sure. in these movies, and his father just walks up. Huh. Have you seen that? No, but that is, that's some swinging for the fences. That's just like... We'll put it in and we'll see what happens in the sequel. <laughs> Maybe he'll be the chameleon. Maybe he'll be a ghost or a hologram or something. Imagination, don't know. Yeah. At this point, a funeral is pretty common fare for a Spider-Man. Oh, movie. yeah. I'm saying Spider-Man No Way Home, uh, don't do a funeral challenge. If you're out there, Kevin Feige, you're watching this, you're not. But if you were, I don't know if you planned a funeral for, for No Way Home. If you filmed it, just take it out. Just be like, hey, it's, it's MJ or, or, or Ned or, yeah. or, or or Aunt May or whatever. They could just be like, you thought I was dead, but I wasn't. Just scrape my knee. <laughs> Fine, actually. What? Yeah, I think I've mentioned this before, but four out of these five Spider-Man movies feature a funeral at the end. Mm. This is one of those. Um, the Sony hack. Yes. This is interesting stuff. You shouldn't all... use those Vios is all I'm saying. Anyway, this was our second ad for <laughs> Sony Vios. <laughs> we should also mention that they use Google and this as opposed to Bing. That's right, yeah. As if that's like a noteworthy thing that we should bring up, I guess. Isn't the number one search term on Bing for Google? Did, did you tell me that? Sounds like something I would make up. Was that in the last video? Maybe. <laughs> Anyways, among the ideas for proposed sequels and spin-offs and all that, we got The Amazing Spider-Man 3, The Amazing Spider-Man 4, Sam Raimi coming back for a potential something. Sinister Six, Black Cat, a Venom solo movie, but a different Venom solo movie. Mm -hmm, yeah. And an Aunt May prequel where she's maybe a spy or something. I should point out that a lot of these or some of these are just like spitballing. Oh, yeah, sure. Which I'm sure studios do all the time. Yeah, yeah. You're telling me that Warner Brothers haven't gone, ah, uh, Bruce Wayne's, ah, uh, Bruce Wayne's butler's dad is a, is, oh, no, they did that in the show, they maybe. It, they actually made that show, yeah. <laughs> Great point, me. Um... <laughs> And that's how they pitched it in the room as well. They're like, oh, Bruce Wayne's butler's daddy's... Oh. And the executives are like, sold. <laughs> Stop digging, you've struck gold. Like I was trying to pick something mm. that would be dumb to do. Too late, they've done all. <laughs> anyway, there was also among this notes from Kevin Feige. Yeah. Extensive notes about how to fix this movie. Okay. Which essentially plays like... Just an episode of what we do here, except much better, much more coherent. And he's got some power and some say in these things. Yeah. This for isn't, now. For, yeah. Here's some of it, but not all of it. Okay. Okay. There are too many storylines and we need to choose which ones we are focusing on and lift out the other ones, i.e. could reduce Father's arc to just Roosevelt. I don't know who that is or what that is. I cannot oh, remember. The station. The oh, the okay. Station. Oh, yeah, the train that, that comes out of the ground, you need the coins from the whatever. Does one of Kevin Feige's notes say... So do you get the subway tokens back or how's that work? If you run out of subway, are they special subway tokens? Are they standard subway tokens? If you run out of subway tokens, mm. if, if they're just regular subway tokens, why would you hide them in the calculator? Yeah. Just have them in your pockets. If they're special subway tokens, if you run out of subway tokens, can you not go to your lab anymore? <laughs> no. are, you make, are you making the coins in the lab? Or do you oh, get them somewhere else? Lock yourself out of your lab. All right. Could your coin making machines in there. Uh, Could have cut the plane crash out. Hmm. This is a great cross-promotional marketing <laughs> synergy. You, what do you know, Kevin Feige? <laughs> and also... <laughs> Producer of the most popular franchise in film history. <laughs> and also Richard destroying spiders and start on the armoured car. Don't start with Spider-Man. Let the danger slash stakes to New York City build first and then have Spider-Man enter the scene heroically. Tone down Paul Giamatti's performance so he seems a bit more menacing and less cartoonish. Strong disagree there. Yep. <laughs> it's very true, yeah. I like seeing his little briefs. Yeah. His little rhino underwear, whatever right, he was yeah. wearing. Uh, really loved Electro. Feels like he may not need the scene in his apartment, which makes him seem completely crazy and hard to relate to. Yeah. Nobody, it's my birthday or something. Shut up. Right? Shut up, nerd. All the special backstory with his super scientist dad fights with the idea that Peter is a normal kid from Queens who becomes the greatest superhero in the world. Andrew's performance is all over the place. Whoa. Ooh. He's, he's a actor. What are you talking about? I like him. A lot of cro What I like about Andrew Garfield is clearly he's just gone, well, I made my money with my Spider-Man movies. Yeah. I'm just going to do weird indie movies from now on. And then yeah, a Spider-Man cool. movie, then of course. Then come back for a Spider-Man movie. <laughs> and it's a Photoshop. Oh. Money ran out, maybe. I don't know. A lot of crying and then a lot of media. Hard to track him emotionally sometimes. It undermines his reaction to Gwen's death because he gets upset and emotional a lot. Mm. 
Don't like the idea that Mary tells Peter his parents were spies because two seconds later he finds out that they are not and it fights against... <laughs> and then again fights with the idea that he's an ordinary kid. Surveillance scene should be about following Harry, not Peter. Correct. No one should be following Peter. Mm. There you go. Maybe interconnect to the ending montage and hearing Gwen's speech with someone going into the special projects and revealing more Easter eggs and see the rhino case has been broke into and the suit is missing great way to transition into the rhino ending which they they ended up doing some version of that yeah but the guy comes in and he and he goes through the lab and then the 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 news reporter's like where's spider-man this this rhino character's causing a bit of a ruckus i want to talk about that guy in a minute great spider-man needs to feel more directly responsible for preventing the planes from crashing why is that even there at all though they just come to that plane they're like this plane of people you don't know this isn't the dark knight on the boat no one gives a shit Get rid of this. Uh, and the last note I've got here is don't show New Yorkers looting, which is probably a good point. Yeah. <laughs> My goodness. But New Yorkers love looting. Come on. Do they? Yeah. Yeah, they, they're not. They're not they, put on a, they put on a Yankees cap and they yep. do some looting and it's great fun. It's they, a tradition. They put on a second hat that says, I heart looting. That's right. <laughs> on top of that hat. It was also revealed in these leaks that Marvel was initially interested in merging these universes together, but it kind of fell through. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why also Kevin Feige was involved in these notes because he's like, if I have to inherit this version of Spider-Man, can you make it better, please, for me? Mm -hmm. Uh, But also, of course, soon after this, Andrew Garfield was fired for speaking out against the movie and also not meeting with a bunch of like executives or whatever. Oh, I vaguely remember that. Yeah. That's, That's weird. Yeah, but like... Fuck it. If I made this, I'd be like, nah, I'm not going to that. Yeah, fair enough, yeah. yeah. But he, he missed one meeting, is that? Yeah. Maybe it was an important meeting. Maybe it was an important meeting. a lot of synergy happening. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the Crucial Fire meeting. You want some amazing trivia, whatever this segment was called? We some amazing trivia, yes, please. <laughs> Small text, full stop at the end. Some amazing trivia. <laughs> Uh, they wanted to recast J. Jonah Jameson but couldn't find someone to live up to the part. So no one. So no one. Just an email. An email, yeah. I don't know if you remember this, but there's a mid-credits teaser in this for Fox's X-Men Days of Future Past, exclusively in cinemas. And that movie's produced by 20th Century Fox, right? That's true. But director Mark Webb, he violated a contract with Fox to make this film. So in order to return the favour, Sony were like, okay, we'll promote an unrelated X-Men movie in this. That's interesting. Yeah. Gustav Fears. All right. Gustav Fears, Mason. You know the character of Gustav Fears? He's, he's appeared in both movies. God, let me think. <laughs> Can I narrow down who this guy is? Is he a guy in the lab? Yeah, he's a guy in the lab. He's one of the, he's, he's in the lab at one point. Gustav Fears. You don't see his face and he wears a hat. He's that guy. He's the sinister man. Oh, he's that show- guy. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Bucket hat. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Bucket hat. Okay, should have said Mr. Bucket hat. So Gustav Fears, also known oh, as... Oh, Gustav Fears. <laughs> Gustav Fears, also known as the gentleman, oh. is a mysterious criminal and associate of Harry Osborn and Oscorp Indri- uh, in- Indus- Industries. It is rumoured that the man that tried to kill Peter's parents in the prologue of The Amazing Spider-Man 2 was either a younger Gustav Fears... Gustav Fears! Uh, ...who survived falling out of the plane, or his <laughs> or his brother, Carl Fears. Carl Fears. A.K.A. The Finisher. Wow. So, there you, there you go. It's wow. rumoured that that's the case. Incredible. <laughs> And just quickly... Can't wait for their spin-off. <laughs> Tears for Fears. Because I died or my brother died. We're sad about or it. Or we're the same person Maybe or we're the same, yeah. <laughs> and there was an alternate ending among many. Uh, it was from an unused draft of the screenplay. We've got seven endings for this. We don't know what to use, which one to use. <laughs> Could we use them all? Kevin, can we use all of them? No? All right, we've got to pick one. All right. <laughs> so uh, this screenplay had Gwen surviving Spider-Man's okay. climactic showdown with the Goblin. She's critically injured. Uh, in order to save her life, Spider-Man performs an emergency transfusion using his own blood. And as a side effect, this act endows her with power similar to Peter Parker's. In the final scene, Gwen, in her Spider-Gwen costume, now calling herself the White Widow, uh, joins Spider-Man's fight against the Rhino. Huh. I think that would have been okay to do. I would have liked that. And again, she's actually a character here. You know what I mean? Like, prior to her death, unlike the comics. So, why not? Well, I mean, probably because the Spider-Man DNA wouldn't work on her because she's not... But she doesn't have the Green Goblin disease, Mason. Oh, that's a good point also, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would also suggest that Peter Parker now can provide the cure for death. I mean, that is the problem generally with <laughs> yeah. with, with magic blood that can bring anybody back to life. That, that is true. present a little bit of an issue. But he could just be like, well, that was my last bit of blood. <laughs> Can't give out any more blood. Nah, I'm out of blood. Mm-hmm. I'm bloodless. Yeah. I'm a bloodless boy. 
I'm 30. You know, it's a different continuity yeah, so when Stacey cares? doesn't have to die. And again, she is back in the comic yeah. books, a parallel universe version of her. So it's fine. They should actually bring back Emma Stone in the role. For real. Yeah. Legit. Maybe they will. Yeah, maybe they will. This is and if not, we get it trending and then they have to. <laughs> we make them. We make them do it. We get the fans in a bloodlust for bringing back Emma That's Stone. Right. Hashtag hyperplasia paracetamol or whatever it was. <laughs> That's right. And they're like, oh, we gotta, we gotta pay Emma Stone, we gotta get Emma Stone back. And she's like, I'm busy, I'm doing another thing. And they're like, it's not, you, you cannot be busy, Emma Stone. <laughs> we'll all be killed. <laughs> They've surrounded Marvel headquarters. <laughs> Uh, this movie, though, uh, I don't think I mentioned the budget last week of the first one. Mm-hmm. That was made for about $230 million and made 758 which is far from a flop. Mm. Not the highest grossing, but it, it's not expected that it would be because it's like it's a reboot, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, this one offered $293 million budget. That's more. With an additional marketing budget of $190 million. Man, That's this, heaps. This is Sony Vise. It must be worth a pretty uh, penny, mate. That's right. Um, this only made $709 million, which caused everything to fall down and nobody <laughs> yeah. cares and whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Wow. Mm. What a movie. I still think it's not all terrible. Like I I, that's maybe that's an unpopular opinion, but I think <laughs> there's enough stuff here at its core that I think it's a very popular opinion. I think you're just saying what everybody's thinking. <laughs> you maybe you haven't I had am. a bloody original thought in your life. Mate. Yes. Look, and don't get me wrong, it's a fucking disaster. Like it's an absolute just shit smeared on a wall of ideas of a movie. It's too much, too many ideas. But there's still, again, the core of it, if you whittled a bunch of it down, mm-hmm. sure, why not? I bet someone has. Who? Um, you? No, why? <laughs> Ugh. Learn how to use editing software. <laughs> I think there's even ideas in this which make it better than The Amazing Spider-Man because it's less of a retread. Yeah. I mean, how can it be a retread when there's this many ideas? Like, it's that's not even possible anyway. I don't even know if what I'm saying makes any sense or if... That's even a good point. Anyways, this is... You just want to gobbling up the runtime of this video, James. You're not wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, this has been Caravan of Garbage. We do this here every week. And if you'd like to see these videos early, you can actually head over to bigsandwich.co where they go up just early. Like I said... Heaps early. uh, Sometimes a little bit early. Sometimes a little bit early. There's also bonus podcasts. There's also movie commentaries. There's also our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. That comes out there a full day early. That's right. And here's a hint towards what's coming next week. Hey, anybody see a ghost? That's right. We're looking to tilt the room. (laughs) But if you do have any suggestions for Caravan of Garbage, please uh, let us know. If there's anything specific Spider-Man that you'd like us to cover, because now we've done all the mainline movies. Yeah. There's so much other stuff, obviously, like animated comics, whatever. Please let us know. Um, There's Spider-Man comics? Not, not to my knowledge. I think they're coming. They're, they're going to spin off the movie. A bit of a tie-in. Okay, yeah, I yeah, like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I'm a Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. Thank you to Ben and Lawrence for the edit. I've done uh, it again. Absolutely exhausting work. <laughs> but we'll see you guys next time. Uh, grab that jammy, guys. We'll see you real soon. Goodbye. Bye.